Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will introduce you to the electron transport chain or electron transport system. Okay, so now we know that from whatever we have studied so far, step 1, 2 and 3, considering all the steps, what all do we have? We have a total in 10 molecules of NADH and we have 2 molecules of FADH2. Till now we have this data. So now in this electron transport chain, our agenda is to utilize these molecules to synthesize ATP molecules. So this electron transport chain is also known as electron transport system and often abbreviated as ETS. It is the main process of ATP synthesis. So this is the step where actual production of ATP takes place. That is adenosine triphosphate molecules are formed in this step. So it utilizes the energy which is stored in NADH and FADH2. As I said, these are all high energy molecules. So we will see how their energy is utilized here to produce ATP. So it is like, why is the name electron transport chain? Because here the electron gets transported through a chain of electron carriers. Now basically what happens here is something like this. Just imagine food is prepared by the plants by photosynthesis and food is prepared in the form of glucose. This glucose passes through glycolysis, through this process glycolysis. So what happens as a result of glycolysis, pyruvate is formed. Now this pyruvate gets oxidized, so pyruvate oxidation takes place. So acetyl coenzyme A is formed and acetyl coenzyme A undergoes through the Krebs cycle. And as a result of Krebs cycle, a lot of NADH and FADH2, I mean not only as a result of Krebs cycle but as a result of these processes as well. Many ATPs as well as NADH are formed here also. Even here NADH is formed. So now the question is how to utilize these NADH and FADH2. So in order to utilize their energy to produce ATP, what happens is electrons from these molecules, so high energy electrons from these molecules NADH and FADH2 are made to pass through electron carriers. So you have so many electron carriers. So the electron will actually pass on from one carrier to the another and finally there is an electron acceptor and that final acceptor is oxygen. And then we will see how when the energy when the electron gets transported through the series of electron carriers, the energy, some energy is created which is utilized for synthesizing ATP. Now it is not possible to explain it to you in just one sentence but I am just trying to explain you that why it is called electron transport chain because electron here will pass through a chain of electron carriers and due to that movement of electrons some energy will get generated which will help in synthesizing ATP. Now how exactly that will happen that we will see in the next few slides. Now here electrons are passed through a chain of electron carriers until accepted by oxygen which is the final electron acceptor to form water. Now the question is where does electron transport system occur? Where is it located? Now for Krebs cycle, now glycolysis happened in the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle and uh, pyruvate oxidation, they both happen in the matrix of the mitochondria. So where will this happen? Now here ATP will get synthesized. We all know mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So ATP synthesis has to happen in the mitochondria. But if you want to be even more precise, so you can ask where exactly in the mitochondria. So this will happen in the inner membrane of mitochondria. So these electron carriers which I am talking about, they are present on the inner membrane somewhat like this. So the electron will actually pass through these electron carriers and this passage of electrons will help in the generation of ATP synthesis. So this is how it will happen. So if you 
consider the same picture here. This is your inner membrane, this brown colored structure or red colored structure. So this is your inner membrane. This is the inner membrane. So on the inner membrane, you would see these structures, this blue colored structures. So these are the structures or these are uh, the electron carriers which will actually help in carrying the electrons or passing the electrons and therefore they will help in synthesizing ATP. And this inner portion is the matrix and as you see here in the matrix the citric acid cycle took place and the output of citric acid cycle was NADH right so this is how this is where the electron transport system is located so before we start with the process of electron transport system let us talk about the complexes which form the electron transport system in the inner membrane now as i am saying that there is a chain of electron carriers so what are those electron carriers what are those compounds which act as electron carriers so let us first let us first know about those complexes so that it will be easier to understand in the later slides so what are the complexes here? NADH dehydrogenase, which is also referred to as complex 1. In order, to, in order to not use such complex names, they have been marked as complex 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So NADH dehydrogenase is the first complex. Next is cytochrome BC1, which is complex 3. Then cytochrome oxidase, which is also called as complex 4, ATP synthase, which is termed as complex 5. So these are the four important complexes. Now you might have seen that there is one complex which is highlighted in yellow, that is the complex 2. So what is so special about this complex 2? Well, this is a separate starting point altogether and it is not a part of NADH pathway. Now, when I talk about the electron transport system, I am talking about utilizing the energy of both types of high energy rich molecules that is NADH and FADH2. So, when I talk about utilizing the energy of NADH to form the ATP molecules that is called NADH pathway. When I talk about utilizing the energy of FADH2 to produce uh, ATP molecules, that is my FADH2 pathway. So when I talk about NADH pathway, only these except the yellow ones are a part of it. When I talk about FADH2 pathway, there comes complex 2. So basically complex 2 is not a part of the NADH pathway. It is a separate starting point altogether. So we'll get to know all that. So once you are clear with NADH pathway, FADH2 pathway will be easy for you because most of the steps are similar for both of them. Now in addition to these complexes, there are few electron carriers which are mobile. That means there are few uh, structures mostly protein structures who are capable of moving from one place to another so they carry the electron move from one place to another and then they actually carry them from one complex to another complex so there are two such mobile carriers which are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane one is ubiquinone which is also known as coenzyme q and the second one is cytochrome c so these are the two mobile carriers now cytochrome C, if you talk about it, is a small protein structure and most of these structures or the complexes which I am talking about here is, most of them are complex protein structures. So this is attached to the outer side of the membrane. So if you look at the membrane, towards the outer side, it will, this is attached. So if, let us suppose, if this is the inner mitochondrial membrane, so you have all these complexes. Let us suppose this is complex 1, this is complex 3. This is complex 4, this is complex 5. Let us suppose this is how the complexes are present on the inner membrane. So now when you talk about these mobile carriers, ubiquinone is present between complex 1 and complex 3. So it is located like this. Again, if you talk about cytochrome C, it is located between 3 and 4 and it is located towards the outer side of the membrane. So somewhat like this. So this is how things are arranged. All these electron carriers are arranged on the inner membrane of mitochondria. So they are all set to carry the electrons or to transfer the electrons from one to the next. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com 
to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.